And our last and final school is Monte Vista. For a brief introduction on Monte Vista, one key point that separates them from the other schools is that in terms of extracurricular, uh, Monte Vista has a very strong business program, uh, DECA specifically. We'll get more into that in a minute. Um, and looking at their other uh, information for the brief introduction, their teacher to student ratio is one to 25, uh, which is slightly above the California average. And then 94% uh, of teachers had three plus years of teaching experience. Now, when looking at their uh, matriculation rates for 2019 and 2020, uh, as the other schools, there was a drop in uh, matriculation to UC Berkeley, went down by about five and a half percent from 16% to just under 11%. Uh, and then when you look at UCLA, there's actually went up by a little bit, uh, by a little bit about a percentage and a half from 13.12% in 2019 to 14.51% uh, in 2020. Uh, so now let's get into where do Monte Vista students go after they graduate. So where Monte Vista students go after they graduate, as you can see from the chart here, there is a lot of interest in UCs and out-of-state schools. Out-of-state had the highest category at 38%, whether it's public or private. And then the next category was the University of California at 31%. And then for the third category, uh, it is actually the two-year college at 14%, uh, which is the second highest among the five schools. And it's uh, not a surprise considering a very good community college, like we said before, uh, Deanza School, Deanza College is actually right across the street from Monta Vista, about a walking distance. Uh, and then their lowest, cat one of their lowest categories, uh, just like the other schools, is the CSUs at 6%. Uh, now that we've covered the uh, what they do after graduation, let's get into that key characteristic, which is Monta Vista's DECA program. Now, for those who are unfamiliar, DECA stands for Distributive Education Clubs of America. And essentially what that the, what DECA tries to do is they work to promote emerging young leaders for business related fields such as marketing, finance, hospitality, and management. And they do this through participating in competitions or events that develop their presentation and real life skills. Uh, now, one thing that Monta Vista did uh, stress in their DECA webinar, which was recently, is that they do um, try to have students in like STEM fields as well join their DECA. Now, for instance, say your child is an engineering major or they like robotics and they have a product that they want to uh, show to the world and have go viral, uh, they will try to invite them into DECA so that they can learn how to present that product at a, in a business uh, professional environment to help boost their uh, public speaking presentation skills so that when that happens in the future, uh, they'll be ready and maybe that product will go viral or get taken on by a company. They even ask uh, people who are interested in pre-med or nursing even to do presentations for hospitality. Now, when you look at the DECA numbers for Monta Vista, they're very strong. Uh, Monta Vista currently has the number one ranked DECA program in the region, number one ranked in the state and fourth internationally. Uh, even more so, the schools' program also has 50% of California's competition wins and 150 top 10 finishers internationally. So just like I said for Lindbergh, where it is a very good school for students who are interested in math and math competitions, I would say Monta Vista High School is a very good school for students who are interested in business, uh, but not just business, but also wanting to improve their public speaking and presentation skills in front of a live audience uh, business professional setting. Um, so now that we have covered Monta Vista's DECA program, let's get into their academics. So for their academics, uh, overall, they have strong SAT scores and uh, national merit semifinalists in comparison to other top area public high schools. Not the highest uh, for each category, but definitely both categories are strong. For their SAT, it is uh, 1411. And then for their national merit semifinalists, they actually increased by quite a bit. In 2020, it was 49. However, in 2021, it is uh, increased by 14 to 63. Uh, when looking at their other academics, they had an increase in their ACT, which was 31 in 2019. And and 3030 in 2020. Uh, and then when you look at their GPA, 9% of students received a 4.0 GPA, and then a little over half of the students were at 3.5 to 3.99. Uh, for the last couple categories, for their AP tests, 92% received a three or higher, and almost half, 49%, received a five. 
For their CASP, 62% uh, were college ready in English and 72% were college ready in math. And then lastly, their number of AP courses offered uh, was 18. So that concludes all of the individual schools that we are covering. But now let's get into some more visuals, uh, some statistical graphs so you guys can get a better sense of where these schools stand uh, next to each other.